This level could be the exit to the back rooms that everybody has been searching for. Or it could just be another trick that gives you false hope that there is even a way out. My name is Brugley, and today I'm going to be talking about Backrooms Level 710, or Ring and Ruin. Let's dive right into it, shall we? Introduction So Backrooms Level 710, or Ring and Ruin, is a newly found level. It's classified as a class undetermined, since it's pretty new, and because several of the properties here are extremely mysterious and not really understood at all. The level entry starts with a quote from a wanderer named Amy. Quote, I opened my eyes to see a hound, so close that I could taste its hot breath. Foul saliva drips from those deadly fangs. A hunting knife materializes in my right hand. I know this place keeps the hounds from hurting me. It is as terrified as I am, poor thing. It disappears, and the knife becomes a chocolate chip cookie. So as you can see, off the bat, this level is already showing some weird properties. Level Description The level is made up of two distinct areas. The first is a silvery ring that's floating in the sky. The second is the ground under this ring with some ruins and an archway. And you'll want to hear what those things are all about in a second. So the silver ring floats horizontally in the sky, directly above those ruins on the ground. It never moves position and never goes up or down, but it's absolutely massive and is around 400 feet in diameter, which is the distance from one side of the ring to the other, and 400 feet is actually taller than the Statue of Liberty, so that kind of gives you a gauge on how big this thing is. There's no visible propulsion system or way that it's holding itself up there in the sky, so it's a complete mystery how it floats, although it might be a supernatural intelligence that keeps it up there. The ring interacts with one person at a time on the level, and that person is seemingly chosen from any other backrooms level to be sent to the ring randomly. Like they could just be walking on any level and get no clipped to this ring inside of it. And that person will be stuck inside the ring anywhere from 3 days to 23 days before they returned. So the inside of the ring is just a large hallway, and that Amy person from earlier was sent here for 20 days and was able to remember some of what it was like. She says the ring has no doors from the inside, only four distinct windows on each cardinal point, so like north, south, east, west, like a compass. Each of these four windows has a little room next to it with different purposes. The room by the north window has a desk and a chair in it with paper and pencil. The east window has almond water and food there. The south window is a bedroom. And the west window has a room next to it with a very small box inside that each person has to put a personal item in as sort of a sacrifice, apparently. When you're here, you're motivated to do certain things from this gut feeling that the level gives you. The ring itself seems to be alive in some way because it communicates with people on an intellectual level. It doesn't use language or signals, it just gives these people the feelings or the instincts to go do things. So for example, it could give a person the instinct to go to the south room or the north room. The ring itself seems to be like some kind of observation and evaluation structure that literally has the sole goal of studying humans to see how they interact with certain stimuli like those four different rooms. It's also thought that the ring was put here by maybe a higher power or an artificial intelligence because of how futuristic the technology is. Summary of the ring. So pretty much to summarize what I just said, the ring is a circular hallway with four rooms and each room has different things in it. The ring itself interacts with each person that goes there through instinctual brain waves. And it's almost as if it's observing how humans respond to stimulus. Sometimes this ring intelligence will even put entities or pictures of different backrooms levels in the hallways to see how people will react to them. Even though nothing will actually hurt you, they're just put there to see how you interact and change based off of what it shows you. It's kind of like a science experiment, and the humans are the test subjects. You know, you've seen those things with the rats in the mazes? That's kind of like what this is. But who's the scientist, and who's studying us? No one knows. The Ruins On the ground under this ring is a circle of earth with no vegetation. 
This circle is 1,320 feet in diameter, and in the middle of it, there's this huge archway called the Harbinger Arch, along with some other stones standing up beside it. No one knows how this got here, who built it, or what it actually means, but it's thought that this archway is a portal to different realms. And maybe even, just maybe, a true exit to the back rooms. Sometimes, if you look through the arch, you can actually see into different realities, even outside of the back rooms or the front rooms. These are completely different universes. And sometimes you can look through and see the real Earth. People have been witnessed walking under the arch and into it, and never walking out on the other side, so it definitely does lead somewhere, but no one knows where or if it's trustworthy to go into. The arch and the ruins are kind of treated as some kind of spiritual thing in the back rooms, and you get the vibe that they're sacred. After these ruins were discovered, other things that had been discovered previously in the back rooms kind of started to make more sense. Like there's these small carvings in wood and stone circulating through the back rooms in the shape of arches or rings, or there's whispers floating about of a so-called pilgrim's path being talked about in notes on the walls and in carvings. Either way, the ring and its intelligence and the archway and the ruins with their supernatural and interdimensional powers are some of the most unique things in all of the back rooms it seems. Hope you enjoyed that level, really like this level. I feel like it's such a unique concept to have this pilgrim's path to the exit of the back rooms with all these little clues everywhere, even though it might not be an exit. No one actually knows. You can't trust anything here. I definitely recommend you go check out this entire article, read it for yourself. I'll link it below as always. Also, I just uploaded a brand new video over on Spoogly, my third channel. This is a Trevor Henderson's Creatures Explained video. You guys are already loving it. I really appreciate the support you're giving on it. There's many more to come. SCP videos, Cryptid Encounters, Trevor Henderson stuff. All things Cryptid are going on the Spoogly channel. Thank you all so much for 11k on there. I cannot wait to continue to grow with that channel. Make sure to go check out Toogly as well for more gaming stuff going up. And tune in to your weekly Broogly programming of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as always. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much. Also, if you're still watching, comment Arch Brugley. That way, I know you're a real G for watching to the end of the video. And if you comment that, well, I'll slap a like on it and a heart because I appreciate and love you all. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.